Hello, party people. Welcome. And for those of you who just hopped out of my SQL Bits professional development session, I just got finished uh, doing a 300 level career guide to professional development, talking about how you plan out your career. And now I'm doing open Q&A for that. So anything y'all want to ask me about that uh, question and answer about that uh, 300 level career guide to planning your career. This was one of those where I just wanted to do off the cuff because I, at the end of the sequel bit sessions, they just drop you right out into the lobby. And I know a lot of y'all asked great questions. For those of you who are in here just from my regular session or my regular just like YouTube and Twitch subscribers, you're welcome to hang out too. Just know that I'm only going to focus on career development stuff questions here. So Katie asks, do you worry people will try and rip off your content? They do. And in the beginning, it used to give me a lot of heartburn. Um, I used to set up like Google alerts for specific keywords in th inside things that were in my blog posts. Um, and over time, I started coming to the point where I was like, uh, the real value in it is me, isn't as much the stuff that I wrote, and it's much more me. And so that's why I like doing things with videos, for example, uh, presentations, audio work, you know, YouTube stuff, uh, podcasts. If they can see you in it, and, and that's weird for us as geeks because uh, a lot of us don't like looking at our pictures or hearing ourselves talk. You know, I used to be totally creeped out by that. Um, but then eventually you just get over it and you go, well, look, if they hired me in person, I'd have to show up in person. So they're going to have to see me and hear me. So I might as well just put it out on webcam. Um, so the stuff that I do in blogs, people rip off all the time. Presentations, people rip off. Some of them, I, I just literally got a, an email from somebody who said, hey, I'm writing a presentation called uh, uh, Think Like the SQL Server Engine. Is that okay? And I kind of go, well, yeah, it's, you know, it has to be because if the title was the only thing that was of value, then I'd be broke anyway. You know, what? you have to bring it to life, whatever the material is, or the pain relief thing. So there's another angle to this, which is stuff like SP Blitz. SP Blitz, SP Blitz Index, Blitz Cash, uh, my training classes, how I teach people to relieve pains. I used to think a long time ago that if I taught people how to relieve a pain, like if I put out there SP Blitz, if I wrote blog posts about here's how you solve a pain, I'm like, oh, they won't need me. You know what? It's the exact opposite. They Google and they see your name repeatedly and they don't necessarily read the article. People are terrible about reading directions. You know, you watch, I've got an instruction on here saying only career development questions today. We'll get questions that are totally unrelated. People don't read, people can't even manage to read a sentence down here on that one line. And what I found out over time is they just figure out that they recognize you from Googling a few times or they Google, they find a post you wrote, they start to read it and they're like, reading is hard. Let's just give him our money. You know, so that it ends up working out pretty well in your favor there. Uh, next question from Deirdre says, and I bet that's the Deirdre that I know from over in the UK too. Any tips on how you cope with the personal stress of building and maintaining your own company versus being an employee and the job security that goes with that? I tell you what, I never, ever, ever wanted to start a company. Like my whole family is all into business. They're, they're either one of two things. They're into business or in, they're into medicine. And I wanted to be an employee. I like security. I like the same check every week. I don't, I'm an American, so I don't want to have to worry about health care. I want somebody just else to take care of my health care. I am not, uh, never wanted to be an entrepreneur. That's just not who I am. I would much rather have security. So the, the moment where I decided to go off and start consulting, I'd had a full-time job, but what I did was I kept totally, oh, it is, very cool. Um, I kept uh, putting at the end of my presentations, hey, if you need help with this, here's my email address. But I purposely said it that way. I purposely said, if you need help with this, here's my email address. I didn't say hire me. I didn't say, you know, I'm available to contract or anything like that. Because sometimes I just help people people via over email. Sometimes I would say, okay, look, this is like three weeks worth of work. If you want to hire me part-time after hours when I'm not doing my day job, you're welcome to. And eventually I got enough side work piled up that I kind of hit the point where I had to go, okay, I think there's enough legs here. I'll never forget 
how I, the, the moment where I really decided to quit my job and start consulting. Um, I was lucky enough to work for a company that let me take vacation time and do consulting. Like if I wanted to do side work, I could take my vacation time during the week and go do things as long as it wasn't competitive with the business that I was in. I ran out of vacation time. Like I kept doing side work. Gradually, people would find me via the blog and ask. And uh, eventually, I got to the point where I ran out of vacation time, and I went to my boss, and I said, can I take unpaid time? Can I just take unpaid time and leave and work on this stuff? And he's like, I, I don't think that's really a good idea. You know, we, we kind of do need you here as an employee. I said, okay. So a company said, you know, what would it take to get you on site in Iowa for four days? And I said, well... And I came up with a number that sounded ridiculous. I said, it's $5,000 a day plus my travel expenses. So $20,000 plus the travel. And they said, okay, how soon can you be here? And I said, well, I guess I'm a consultant now. You know, I guess I need to turn in my notice and I need to go start doing the consulting thing because that is a ton of money and I'd be an idiot not to say yes. So I hung out my hat and I started doing consulting uh, just on my own. And I jumped in with Paul and Kim, Paul Randall and Kimberly Tripp of SQL Skills. I'm like, I don't want to go out on my own. I'd rather join another firm. And I was with them for, I can't remember how many months that was. It was like five, six months or whatever. And I decided to go out and hang out my own hat. And at the moment where I decided to go hang out my own hat, I sat down with my wife and I said, uh, I'm thinking about starting my own company instead of being with someone else. And my wife said, I can't believe it took you this long. I was so blessed to have a supportive partner who believed in me and was willing to take risks with me. Um, we're, we were lucky that we didn't have any real dependents. We didn't have kids. Uh, and so we got to the point where I said, if I run out of money, I'll just go take a regular DBA job again. I like doing database administration. I like jobs. Jobs are fantastic. Yes, indeed she is. Good to see you, Andy. I'm like, jobs are fantastic. I like salaries. But why not try? I guess I'll try. You know, there, there seems to be some good money in this. Um, so, and from that point on, the stress wasn't that bad when I was just trying to make a living for myself. So I didn't have to do that much work with managing it. But I'll tell you what, when I started trying to become a manager of people again, when I started trying to build up a company with Jeremiah, Kendra, and Tim, and we started to build up, we wanted to get to like 10 or 15 consultants, holy cow, there's stress there. There was an insane amount of stress. Uh, so I, I wouldn't recommend that very highly. I mean, I say I wouldn't recommend it very highly. It depends on the person that you are. Right? Some people love stress and love management. I'm a data person. I, I didn't really that at all that wasn't for me so I eventually came to the realization that I'm better off just being a solo person just me Richie and Erica and going building our own little things and not trying to build an empire I'll have a nice life for myself and I'm, that's totally good enough for me um, so I'm going to go back through the questions and answers so or through just so that I hit them in order uh, drop table says thank you for the coupon you're welcome good to uh, see you over in class uh, Schrader says how to get good knowledge on performance tuning you're in the right place in the sense that you're in YouTube but go up to YouTube and just check out our channel and I get all kinds of videos in there there um, Katie says we've had a few issues with being seen in work get a new manager my workload gets severely dumbed down has this ever happened to you and oh any tips for overcoming it I I like whenever I get a manager I like to after we just have at least courted for a week or two and you know we've I mean, they know me and I know them at least a little I like to just schedule and go hey can I get like 30 minutes with you what I want to hear is I want to hear what's important to you to accomplish in the next like six months or a year forget my career for a second i want to hear what you want to do tell me what you want to do as a manager where do you want to be six months or a year from now and what can i do what can i lay out in my tasks list because all of us have, have time that we can sneak into our calendars one way or another during work when we're probably supposed to be doing something else and i'm like what can i do to make sure that you're successful because really, at the end of the day, that's what having a job is all about. The person who makes sure that you get paid and gets your annual raise or whatever, what do they need? What will make them happy? 
Um, and you can usually pretty well tell right away if they're like a total phony, a fraud, if they're like, well, it's achieving my personal goal, what's important to you? You know, you can tell whether or not uh, that, that kind of thing is going to be a workable relationship. And if it's not a workable relationship, because I've had bad bosses too, what I like to do is find someone else in the company who can be my champion, someone else who will, if all hell breaks loose, they'll take over and hire me into their department. And I'll have that same discussion with them, especially if I have a rapport with them. I'm like, hey, what is it that's important to you and how can I make sure that the work that I do contributes to your personal success? It really hasn't been uh, uh, Max's. I asked those questions and I wasn't able to reach the manager. I don't think I got it. I need to try again. I don't know if he was listening. So many people get caught off guard because they think uh, that you're looking it for yourself. And I, I truly think that if you're going to be a successful employee, it, it also needs to be about latching yourself onto someone that you respect and that will do great things for careers. You know, like I've, I've always gotten further by hitching my cart to a rising star, someone where I'm like, that person knows a lot and I wanna learn everything that they know and I wanna be around them and they inspire me. So that's been helpful for my career. Uh, next up, Ab Abek says, if you were at the young at the beginning of your career, which database would you select to be an expert? There's so many platforms out there. The, the one thing that I tell you though is, you wanna have something expensive. The money that you make is tied to the costs of the tool that you work on. Look, I'm not saying that nobody who works with MySQL or Postgres is a millionaire. There are millionaires who work with MySQL and Postgres. But you're going to look cheap if you stand next to Oracle. You're going to look cheap if you stand next to SQL Server Enterprise Edition. So I, I really focus my career on how can I help people with very expensive SQL servers? How can I help them go faster? My rates look cheap in comparison. And the way that I say it to, uh, to customers is my rate is less than one core of Enterprise Edition SQL Server. I'm going to charge you, when we do our SQL critical care engagement, I'm going to charge you less than the cost of one CPU core, and you better well believe you're going to get way more bang for the buck from me than you would one additional core of SQL Server Enterprise Edition. Look, it's not like they're getting ready to choose between me or one core, but that puts the costs in perspective. If you stand next to a MySQL server and you say, I, I'm going to cost you $7,000. They'll, you know, crank up the little finger, crank up their middle finger because you look so expensive in comparison. <laughs> and SQL Dev DBA says cries in PL SQL. Um, next up, let's see here. Uh, where was another one in here? Santa says, uh, Santa on YouTube says, what would be your strategy for moving out of a jack of all trades type of position to a more focused role? Find the most expensive pain point that the organization is experiencing and get good at solving that expensive pain point, which is really what my SQL bit session was all about. Uh, next up, uh, Ishirvana says, what are the criteria that you take in consideration when you want to build a client? Um, is the project safe? Like, could I get sued or uh, in legal trouble? Which sounds crazy, but I've actually seen projects where you would get sued or get in legal trouble if you attached your name to that database. And then also, are the people respectable? Like, do I want to do business with them? Every now and then I'll be in the sales process with a client and I'm like, you know what? These people are buttholes. And I, I really don't want to have be involved with them for any length of time. I'm going to be miserable if I'm attached to these buttholes. There's all kinds of interesting paper towel reference, toilet paper references there. Uh, but so those are the two big things uh, right there. Um, <laughs> what are you wiping? wiping his tears with money? Uh, Al, uh, over on YouTube, Al Getty asks, my question is, how do I overcome procrastination and imposter syndrome? I don't think that you do. I think that the, the key is understanding what they are. So procrastination, the, uh, I heard a great definition of, of procrastination. It's avoiding uncomfortable feelings. So once you kind of identify that procrastination is the is avoiding uncomfortable feelings it helps you look at a task and go okay what what is the uncomfortable feeling that i'm so afraid of here 
okay, if you name it, then it starts to feel better about, oh, that's why I'm dreading accomplishing this thing. And it helps you head it more face on. Imposter syndrome never goes away. Um, the, the thing that helps me is somebody's coming to me waving a bunch of money around because they can't figure out how to solve the problem. I'll be straight up and tell them, look, if I can't solve the problem, I don't want you paying me a dollar. You know, don't, don't bother because there are problems out there I don't know how to, to solve. But if you're going to pay me and I, I did solve it, woo I guess I didn't suck too bad. Uh, good to see you, Jedi Mind Gorilla. Good to see you. Uh, next up, um, uh, Mike Shaw says, Mr. P. Shaw, my friend Pam, uh, says, I'm a DBA, but my day-to-day uh, -day administration involves a lot of non-database-related tasks. How much personal time would you sacrifice to grow your technical knowledge if your job doesn't allow much time for database-specific knowledge growth? Ooh, um, I don't know where I originally heard this. I, it certainly isn't my own quote. But the, the quote went along something like this. You already have all of the technical knowledge that you need in order to get the next job you want. What you don't have is the professional development need, the professional development skills. How do you find that job you want? How do you convince the person that you want to give you that job? If you're going to do consulting, how do you find the clients that are going to pay you? Uh, so the, the, in technical, look, in terms of technical skills, most of what our job is these days is Google. You and I both know that you're sitting around Googling the answers. You're doing whatever it says on Google, and it works. You can spend the rest of your life getting paid for that. It's actually a thing. It's called IT. That's all we do, believe it or not. So I actually wouldn't put that much work into learning technical stuff in my free time. What I'd actually go after is the professional development stuff. Because believe it or not, that's the thing that's going to get you paid more. Uh, J uh, oh, Shamville says on YouTube, do potential clients bargain and how do you negotiate? If you go to my personal blog site, ozar.me, so ozar.me on my personal site, there is a uh, category of blog posts called uh, co uh, consulting. And in there, I've got a blog post on how you set your consulting rates, or even if you just search for Bren Ozar, how do you set your consulting rates? The basic idea of this is this. You set a rack rate. You know, for example, my daily rack rate is 2600 bucks a day. My daily rate rack rate is 2600 bucks a day. If you want a discount, here are the things that you can do to earn a discount, like a public case study. If I can take what we did together and write a white paper about it, I'll give you a discount of, say, 50%. And then people are like, what, what, you're going to put my dirty laundry out in public? I, I, don't, I don't think that that's really okay. No, no, no. Well, I'm like, well, if you want it, that's how you can get a discount. And then they immediately understand that, oh, I'm not willing to do what it takes to get a discount. Therefore, I got to pay the regular rate. Other examples are uh, if I can do the rates or do the work after hours, if I can do the time that's more convenient for me. For example, if I'm fairly booked up right now, if I can schedule that work during Thanksgiving weekend where I might not otherwise do the work, if I can do it uh, after hours, all that kind of thing. Mike Montero's video, that is so phenomenal. If, if you pay me, if you search for uh, if you pay me, it's a video out on YouTube, freely available. It's not safe for work, but it's magical in terms of teaching you how you interact with uh, clients when they don't want to pay the rate. Uh, next up, uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. I think I pissed one. Past one. Past one. Uh, jo oh, Justin, Justin J. Bird says, I asked on the session, you talked about finding your place in the market when you weren't competing with others. What process did you go through to find that space? What I did was why I wanted to identify the problem that I wanted to solve as specifically as possible. If you hang your head out on, or hang your uh, uh, sign out in the world and you're like, I fix everything. If I'll do your uh, tires and oil and also I'll fix your data bass. If you try to hang your hat or your sign out and you say that you're going to fix everything, you're competing with everyone. But the more you can narrow in on, I do this one thing, I'm the person who does this one thing, and I'm just going to make one up. I fix Dynamics AX performance. You are not competing with 
anyone else because you've cast a net in so narrow that when people Google for that thing, they find you. When people go to see presentations at conferences about Dynamics AX, you are the presenter who's specifically talking about Dynamics AX performance. When The more narrowly you can do that, Andy Leonard here on the stream, I, I hate yelling out people's names because then they jump inside their chairs, but there we go. Like Andy Leonard on the, on the stream, Catherine Wilhelmson or other examples, if, if you want to learn about uh, Azure Data Factory, they are the people. Like they're the ones teaching you how to migrate from SS, uh, SSIS, BIML script over to Azure Data Factory. It's a really narrow space. Whereas if they try, <laughs> says I jumped, if, I, if they tried to say, I help you move data around, well then they're in competition with absolutely everyone else. I, I have one bio line that I use absolutely everywhere. I make your SQL server go faster, period, full stop. A lot of people are like, well, I kind of sort of do that. This is one sentence. I make your SQL server go faster. And then everything that I write, I talk about, all of that is I make your SQL server go faster. His wife is a really excellent cook, so we could trade things back and forth, or baker to be more specific. So that's uh, true. Uh, next up we have Mac Genie says, good to see you Mac Genie. What are your thoughts on a company pushing things like Linux systems work into the DBA group? I worry that they're diluting my skill set. Oh, it's such a good question. Um, when someone used to bring me something that they wanted me to manage. I'm a DBA, I'm sitting here in my little lonely cubicle and someone comes in and says, hey, we got a MongoDB server, it's yours. I love playing Columbo. Columbo, you're too young for this reference, but he was this uh, detective who played really dumb. He wore a, a big long trench coat and he always kind of looked like he was messy hair and looked like he didn't know what he was doing. And he played really dumb and then the bad guys fell right into it. They would think that he was really dumb and he would fall right into their trap. And Columbo, if he was a database administrator, if someone brought in MongoDB or Linux, Columbo would say, wow, I, I've never seen that before. I have no idea how that works. Which training class did you want to send me to? And they're like, well, but you, uh, what, no, we just want you to figure it out. Oh, man, I'm not that smart. I'll try. I'll struggle for a while. But boy, I sure hope this isn't a production one because I know how I am. I'm going to mess this up for sure. It's going to take me a while. How many hours did you want me to spend like learning on it and doing studying on it before I take it over? Well, no, 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 you should just, don't, can't you just figure out, oh man, this can be dangerous. I'll do my best. And then Columbo would never miss a chance to make sure that if someone wanted, you know, had an urgent question, well, okay, but it's going to take me a while because I really don't know anything about that thing. What I'm really good at is this thing over here, this SQL Server thing, this is what I'm good at. But boy, if you hired me thinking that I knew anything about Linux, we both done messed up because I wouldn't have applied for that job either. I don't know. It sounds crazy. It sounds like you're about to get yourself fired. But it turns out to portray the other side is you're not some kind of janitor who just can mop up any kind of mess that they hand to you. You're a specialist now. You specialize in things. So then that starts to set the tone of, oh, I can't just bring him my coffee and have him make my coffee during the day. Yes, that's true. That's absolutely true. Drop tables. Uh, next up, ABEX says, do we really need SQL Server performance skills in Azure SQL Database? Because it seems to me like we can scale up or down whenever it's required. Oh, wow, is that free? Do they just let you turn up a knob and all of a sudden things go faster? Because you know what? That hasn't been my experience. My experience is that they seem to want a credit card. They just don't seem to want to do it for free. I, I don't know what that's all about. And you know what's really weird? Stuff's expensive. It's really expensive. What was I saying earlier about standing next to something expensive? You want to stand next to something expensive, go stand next to the cloud, because that stuff's really expensive. Uh, Savage Nav says, uh, good to see you. How to get into jobs that require skills that aren't I terrible? I'm just an awful human being. Uh, how to get into jobs that require skills I don't use in my current job. I use SQL in my job at no Python or statistics. However, I learned those jobs in, or statistics subjects in school during my master's program. I'm trying for data science roles. The hiring manager simply isn't interested in those. 
So it's really hard to get a job without experience. It's hard to get experience without a job. So what you do is you get a job standing next to the experience you want, standing next to the person who has that experience. And remember what I said earlier about sitting down with that person and asking what it takes to make them successful? Bingo, that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to go get a job working with data scientists. Data engineer is a great example of that. You're going to go get a job sitting next to them, and you're going to say, look, I really like the work that you do. Could I come in after hours or weekends or whatever and learn from you? And maybe when I don't have anything going on in my own job, can I sit with you and learn how to do some of the, I'm not even going to pipe, I'm not going to ask a question, I'm just going to sit here and watch. I'll be just real quiet. Now, it's, you're lucky if you can find a person who wants to pass that knowledge on to you, but volunteer to do their grunt work. And if you will do their grunt work, they will drag you along, if you find the right person, inside their career with them. But if you want to walk into a, a place and get a data scientist job without experience, think of it as medicine. Go walk into a hospital. Hello, yes, uh, yes, I would like a job as a doctor. No, I, I had a degree. No, I didn't do any interning. Doctors have to do internships. That's how they get their job. When you go stand next to a data scientist and intern alongside them, that's how you get that work. Savish Nav says, to give you more context, I'm just one tech person in the entire company. Then you're not going to be able to get where you want to go. You're going to have to change positions. And meaning you're going to have to go do that in a larger company if that's what your career goal is. Brentos are bearer of bad news. Uh, next up, let's see here. Anchor says, what should I learn, AWS or Azure? Whichever one you're getting paid to learn. It's all six of one, half dozen of the other. Um, Plum says, I finished my DBA course, but I don't feel confident enough for a job interview. What should I do? The people out there who are applying for jobs are just as dumb as you are, if not more so. Seriously, you would not believe the bad quality of interview candidates that I've seen out there. People who can't string three words together to form a SQL query, you know, just utterly epic bad. Even though you think you're an idiot, I guarantee you there are people way worse than you are. For example, the kinds of people who see right here on this screen that it says we're only talking about career development questions, and they're in here asking, what is CX packet weight? Good God, that person actually had their name next to their questions. See, you're already better off than they are. Uh, next up, Eamon says, is it worth staying in place that you didn't get any critical issues to learn from? Oh, it's the whole, do you want to be a small fish in a big pond or do you want to be a big fish in a small pond? The way to think of it is there are times in your life when you can afford to be challenged. There are times in your life where you can afford to uh, be stressed, to work harder, to work after hours, or do whatever it takes to succeed. There are also times in your life, like when you have a newborn child, when you have a family member who is sick, uh, COVID-19, when you're under stress just from the environment. There are times in your life where you don't want to be challenged, when you want to take it easy for a while. In those cases, it's great to work in a job when you're not challenged at all, and you can just know you can continue to produce the things that you're comfortable producing, and someone is happy trading that money for whatever it is that you produce. So for me, it's more about the, the times in my life when I'm okay not learning things, and I just want to coast for a little while, like now. I'm not really working that hard. That's not true. I'm work learning right now. Um, Deja Reb, good to see you, says, what if someone has done some SSIS, some SQL performance, some Power BI, what direction does one go after that? That's what we talked about inside the SQL Bits session, and I talked about finding the high-value pain points, and I can't rehash that here, unfortunately. Dope. Uh, let's see here. Ohm says, what's the future of database administrators with the emergence of database as a service in Azure? The challenge that you run into is database as a service comes with a lot of limitations, performance features, and uh, uh, cost. And so Azure doesn't have the adoption that you would think it has if you listen to Microsoft presentations. Microsoft's very interested in selling you Azure because Microsoft makes money by the hour when your crappy code runs up in Azure. 
So if you listen to Microsoft te teaching at any conferences, they'll tell you, that everyone's in Azure. It's amazing. Totally great. Come on down. The water's fine. Don't mind the screams in the background. You'll be totally comfortable. Oh, yes. And by the way, can I have your American Express card? So you just got to keep that in mind when you're hearing that Azure's on fire and everybody's in it. It's just simply not the case. As you can see from our LexSQL Constant Care Population reports, where it's truly SQL Server 2008 and 2008R2 have higher adoption rates than Azure SQL DB does. Uh, next up, coming down, Shafiq says, Hi, dear. Hello, handsome. Uh, I have 20 years of experience in SQL Server and Oracle. Now I got certified in Azure. How do I get an Azure-based job? Well, you, you, you apply for one, right? They don't, they don't come knocking at the door. Uh, next up, uh, Daz says, I, I agreed. I interview 25 to 30 people for every developer I hire, for sure. Al Getty says, how do I deal with companies when they ask you for activities you know how to do, but your position is below that responsibility, even your salary? I think what you're saying, I think what you're saying is when your manager comes in and asks you do, to do something expensive that they're not paying you how to do or paying you to do, you should do it. That's how you get to put it on your resume. I was responsible for emergency brain surgery or whatever it is. Now, if they're coming in and asking you to do something that you feel is too low, like you feel you're overqualified for, because I'm not sure if I read that question right. If you feel like you're overqualified for it, are they paying you? If so, do the work. There were times as a database administrator where they would bring me something and be like, hey, can you clean the contents of this spreadsheet? And I'm like, hell yeah, I can. For the amount of money that I'm making, I'll clean your car. I'll wash your hamburgers, whatever it is that you need done. I'm in. This is, let's do it. Because we're sometimes we're just lucky to have jobs, especially me. <laughs> Killer Clown says, I'm having, I'm in a comfortable job, but I'm surrounded by people I'm not learning from. I'm paid above the local rate in my area. Should I take a pay cut to move uh, somewhere with people that I can look up to and learn from? You don't have to learn in your day job. Some, I know when I was a database administrator, I kind of, there was a point where I hit a pinnacle where I, I couldn't learn more from the people that I was with. So I started answering questions on like Stack Overflow, DBA.Stack Exchange, uh, SQL Help, writing blog posts about it. Sometimes the best challenge that you can get is just answering other people's uh, questions in public can really push you hard. So just to put it in perspective, you don't if you're making way more money then you feel like you deserve in your local area. That can actually be great. You just keep if you want to keep cash in that checks. That's when you start building your personal brand online uh, and building up your blog, building up your online following, so that when that position eventually collapses, because sooner or later a lot of positions do, uh, when that position eventually collapses, you'll have a network of people not just inside your uh, company. Uh, Miles say, or Mill, Mill on uh, YouTube says, are there any entry-level DBA jobs that don't require at least three years of experience? Landing my first gig has been tough. It's a lot like getting that first gig as a doctor. You know, even though you have a certificate on being a doctor, you're not going to just walk into some office and have them hire you as a doctor. You're going to have to do an internship first. For SQL Server, doing an internship, hey, Mr. Robot, go ahead and read this thing right over here. Um, so for doing an insure internship in the database administration world, what that looks like is either working as a systems administrator or developer, someone who stands next to the database administrator but isn't necessarily the database administrator. So that way, as you're doing database administration tasks, you have those tasks on your resume in the job that you're doing now, even though it's not in your title. Oh, also, too, uh, thanks. If any of y'all want to follow, uh, catch notifications whenever I stream, you can follow me on YouTube and Twitch and uh, on Facebook, too, as well. And you'll get live notifications whenever I do a live q and I'll be doing another live Q&A Saturday uh, after I finish my second session at SQL Bits. Also, my next one on Deadlocks, too, as well. Uh, Ernesto says, any advice from a geek that comes from RBG2, COBOL, BASIC, DB3, Fox Pro, da 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 da, -da SQL 2019? Advice to what? The first piece of advice I'd give you is stop lifting, listing off uh, technologies from 1970 as if they're going to impress someone. 
pick the current technologies that you do, but also pick the pain points that you solve. Managers care less about the technology and more about the pains. How did you save the business money? How did you help them make more money? That's the thing that's valuable. And if you've been doing that for 30 years, you should have some great success stories of the money that you've helped the business make or the expenses that you've helped them avoid over the years. Uh, let's see here. Drop table says seven years ago, I left a cushy, well-paying job where I wasn't doing anything new because I felt that I was losing qualifications or I was forgetting what I knew. Best decision I ever made. Another one along those same lines, I've seen people struggle about whether or not they should leave a uh, shop where there's nothing going on, like they're still on SQL Server 2000 or 2005. And every year that they, they're there, their, their knowledge is drifting further behind where the market is at. So that's, that's totally legit in as well. Uh, Eamon says, the comfortable job that gives you the chance to learn new information and study and not the real experience in applying what you're learning. Yeah, yeah, that comfortable job doesn't give you the experience to learn. Coming down a little further here. Uh, do, 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 do. WebTrack says, can PowerShell increase database administration profile in career growth? Where PowerShell rocks is it helps you manage more servers with less time. So if you want to be in a position where you're known for managing a lot of servers, PowerShell's a great way to get there. Just make sure that that's the career that you want. As we talk about in the SQL bit session, we talk about where the pains are and where the money is. That may or may not be a position where a lot of money ends up uh, coming your way. Uh, next up, uh, Ibex says, do we need to spend time and money on official Microsoft certifications with, for career development? So the thing with Microsoft certs is they help you get past the first line of human resources droids. The people who are just scanning for keywords must see Microsoft cert, must see Microsoft cert. But they're scanning a really large stack of resumes. If you're in a stack of resumes, you're screwed. It doesn't matter whether you pass the droid or not, you're probably not getting the job. What you want is you want the people who are doing the hiring to go, oh, we got to get ABEC. ABEC is the only person who can solve this problem. So that's what the SQL bit session was all about, building a reputation for the thing and then being known for that thing such that they reach out and grab you and they don't give a damn what's on your resume. I haven't had a Microsoft cert on my resume in like easily 10 years. Uh, that's not a remarkable, Ben. That's an Apple stylus, though. Uh, next up, uh, GK, oh, no, no, I skipped one. Al Getty says, do you have to notify your supervisor when you're feeling burnout? What I would do is I would talk to a trusted friend or mentor first um, because the cause of the burnout may be the supervisor and you, you just may need help navigating that. Uh, your workspace may, depending on the company that you work for, they may also have a free professional development, uh, or not professional development, uh, like a, a psychological helpline that you can use when you're feeling stress. There are also free lines that you can call. So uh, what I would encourage you to do is definitely reach out to people inside your network, 800 lines, etc. Because it is, if you feel like you're feeling burnout, it is seriously worse than you think think it is because a lot of people who when they're myself included when I'm feeling burnout I don't notice it until it's way deep into it and then I'm like oh my god I'm surrounded by you know smoke and burnt poo I, I think I am having burnout GK says apart from having the necessary know-how is how is it also important to be able to describe your skills in an articulate way do you have any tips on how to improve that part focus on the pains you solved like if the manager saw what you did and went, oh my gosh, thank goodness they blank because it saved us from blank or it enabled us to make this much more money. Focus on what the business users who are non-technical would have said about your work. Don't say, I implemented replication in order to move data across. Instead, say things like, I enabled us to save $4 million by moving out of an, a leg legacy data center. 
you know, to focus on what's going to be the real money involved. Sometimes, as in our career planning, we start to realize that, oh, snap, I actually haven't been related to anything money. I've been focusing on improving fragmentation, you know, and the business doesn't give a rat's behind about that. So that can be useful to know, too. Uh, next up, do, 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 do. K the Blade Runner says, I'm not a professional development or, or professional developer, no formal education in computer science, me either. Uh, but programming is more like a hobby. I use it as a tool to make my job and colleagues' tasks easier. Should I follow in a dev job or keep my present job? I was really, I would say, uh, what lights you on fire? Like, what are you wanting to work on even when you're not working on it? That's the thing that you should probably pursue. Tager Reb says, is your career-related SQL Bits session in the past or is it upcoming? It just finished. So during that session, I pop, popped people into my site to go do the live Q&A. So SQL Bits is a conference over in the UK. You can go uh, hit it at sqlbits.com. I don't think you can still sign up. I think sign up is over. But they replay sessions later. So in a few months, they'll probably be available for free. Uh, next up, uh, Sammy says, for a mid-career professional in SQL, BI, EDW, and DBA, uh, and someone willing to learn something relevant for current skills, what path would be the most fetching? Go to your manager, go to whoever like pays your salary, sit down with them and say, what's the thing that the business wants to be able to do but can't today? What's the thing that the business is like, oh my God, it would be amazing if we could figure out which customers are going to leave us or which customers are the most likely to spend more money or which uh, cars are going to be the most likely to be returned due to warranty repairs. Start zooming out really big picture and then start thinking about how you can use your tools to accomplish that goal. That's the one that I would do if you want to make more money in the short term. If you want to do it in the really long term, watch that session over at SQLBits.com. Uh, oh, Gaiman says, for DBAs, is it a must now to experience more about cloud data solutions or do we still have a good amount of time as database administrators? Uh, given the percentage of companies that aren't interested in adopting the cloud, I think you've still got a pretty long way before you have to have the cloud. But if you want to make a lot of money today, you can say things like, I am one of the few people who helped migrate an on-premises system of 200 SQL servers up to Amazon RDS. You, there just aren't a lot of people who can say that they've actually done that hands-on. So there's a value to that if you want to do that kind of work, just because it's rare right now. But it won't be rare forever. It's going to be pretty commonplace within a couple more years. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Uh, Kid Mistulu says, uh, I'm Microsoft certified DBA and I've taken DBA training classes from you and I have a year of experience. Problem is I'm not comfortable in an interview. Uh, I, even though I know the answer, I'm not able to explain what I know. In addition, English is my second language and I'm generally I'm not good at speaking. Because of that, I missed a lot of opportunities. What would you advise me? I would probably say, um, probably pick up a... T uh, a uh, Toastmasters, so search for Toastmasters, as you know, the people who butter their bread and they put it in the toaster. Well, it turns out not only are they really good at making things like crumpets or biscuits, but Toastmasters are also all about teaching you how to do public speaking. I've never taken one of their courses, but I've heard amazing things from people who have gone through that process. I don't know how they're uh, dealing with COVID-19, but it's a global organization. It's everywhere. It's in your local town. So search for Toastmasters and sign up for that. Uh, Ron says, how do I deal with a senior DBA who is out of touch? Um, you probably want to be more specific. Like, what's the pain you're having? Um, if you expect the lead, like whoever's ahead of you and whoever's the are on Zoom, oh, good. Um, if you expect whoever's above you to be more technically savvy than you, you're forgetting how leadership and management works. As you go up the chain in seniority, people are often more disconnected from the underlying technologies. Uh, and then last one we'll do. Uh, Zwar says, SQL Server DBA with 17 years of experience. I never held a Microsoft cert and I have no issues getting jobs. I paid for Brent's season pass and DBA interview questions. Woo! Um, Best money I've spent to stay sharp and uh, so forth. Okay, good. 
All right, so we'll stop here, and because I'm going to go off and go do brunch with my wife, I am kind of done for the day. I was on UK time today, speaking over at Sequel Bits I'm on UK time all this week and next week. Next week, next week I have an EU client, so I'm basically working like I think 1 a.m. Pacific to 9 a.m. Pacific, or somewhere inside there. Uh, so I'm up a lot before dawn uh, these days. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope you had a wonderful time at my Sequel Bits session, and I will see you around at Sequel Bits. Thanks, everybody, and adios. Thank <laughs> you.